My major concerns with the oil drilling in the Bight or the potential oil drilling in the Bight is the fact that we're affecting uh, such a diverse uh, in environment and, and, and our food hub. It's our seafood hub that is recognised not only locally but nationally and also around the world. We've been publicising this region uh, from a clean, green environment for, for decades. And if we're going to have any drilling take place, uh, whether anything happens or not, it sort of uh, tarnishes that brand straight away. The other fact of the matter is, is that this is a food source to the state, to the nation and to overseas markets. Um, so are we really willing to risk the potential uh, of, of, of an oil spill or any damaging effect uh, leading up to that um, over our food source? I really can't see what the benefits actually are. And if it was about a wealth thing, then we still have to weigh up why are we willing to put that extra wealth over the top of potentially destroying our, our, our local industries. So what's at risk if we have an oil spill? Well, we have no supply of seafood. It's as simple as that. Um, we're out of a job, we shut our businesses down. To us, whom are the ones who are operating in that environment, um, it just appears to be all risk. Um, and any of the upside will be um, enjoyed by the, the companies that uh, tend to be international, this uh, seismic activity that's uh, taking place, particularly if it gets close into the reefs and islands where we work, um, that it really could destroy, kill the spawn. Um, and if that happens, then you have a whole cohort, a whole year's worth of abalone that will not um, recruit. I mean, there's 22 licenses on the west coast here and each has a two-man dive team. So there's two families plus the um, owners. There are a lot of people's livelihoods that are going to be put at risk that will get very little benefit from it in the long run. Is it worth the risk? What is, basically, what, what do we get out of it? Like, is all of this just gonna end up going offshore or even to the federal government with very little return to this region? Where we're saying, well, unless an income protection policy be taken out for our industry and everyone so that as soon as something happens, then a revenue stream starts. Wildcatch represents the 800 license holders um, that produce millions of dollars of worth of seafood. And if that is compromised by any means, then you have a whole region that is gonna suffer for a long period of time. Because a compensation package is just gonna be delayed and it'll be fought out until we basically go broke. Should uh, anything happen um, in the bite, would be um, fairly detrimental to our business and to the 27 staff and the, their respective families. We have an established brand of a clean, green environment food from our pristine waters. You know, we're not opposed to big business, but we've worked so hard to get that image here now. Why would you want to damage that? South Australian Rock Lobster it creates about 1,300 jobs, uh, 150 million direct into the into regional communities, and obviously every dollar you spend contributes to about four to five extra dollars. So you're looking at half a billion dollars of economic um, return. You take that out, uh, and you've got all the families that that survive on that, and the businesses, and you've got a big problem. Seismic testing they carry out to find these um, so-called wells to drill in is of huge concern to the lobster industry. The air gun affects the balance in the top of the lobster, turns them upside down, and they have trouble righting themselves. It also affects them extending their tails. So when they go to spawn, they can't actually extend their tails and let their spawn go. Seismic survey kills zooplankton in the water. We, we know it would have to kill purulus. So, if that kills them and never gets back to the shore, then we have a recruitment problem in years to come. For the EP, it's all risk and no reward. It's very easy to say that there'll be jobs for locals in the area. The reality is there will be no jobs for anybody in the area. These companies will bring in expertise from wherever in the world. They'll have no qualms in flying in that workforce. They'll need to fly in that expert workforce.
such a draw card is, is just the pristine region that we have here. And when people come here, then they also realise that we are just such a fantastic region for creating food and beverages because of the nature of, of just the, the clean, beautiful environment that we have here. Other councils have stood up and said that they're opposed to drilling in a bite. They are 100% certain that there's nothing for their constituents to, to gain from it. Um, so there is this cloud over uh, the um, low EP and, um, and Port Lincoln about where that jobs basis will come from. I think it makes it very clear that this is just not something that we should be risking um, for our environment. I think there are far more clever ways to create jobs um, in a sustainable way than to uh, use up a finite resource that we actually don't need if we are smarter about the way we choose to live our lives um, and, and risk a whole environment, a whole community in the process. I'm really deeply concerned about how that is aesthetically going to impact uh, the strong brand that we have around our resources, our industries that currently exist. Uh, and today I currently run marine tours, taking people to some of the most pristine, remote, rugged, beautiful locations on the planet. And I'm really concerned about how that's irreversibly going to be changed if there's an incident or an accident. We have a fantastic, vibrant, growing, exciting, uh, world-class tourism industry here in Port Lincoln. Our business you know, injects about $3 million annually into the South Australian economy, it employs 18 local people. We spend about half a million dollars a year just on suppliers around town. So, you know, it's a significant contributor. And if the oil industry was to go wrong, that would cease to exist. I don't know that that's something that we can come back from or is really worth risking. Why has an internationally listed company changed its name from Statoil to Equinor? They also think oil is a dirty word. You've got this beautiful untouched area and you've got mining coming in and is it going to, is people going to be turned off by it? Are they going to go, well, you know what, um, I don't want to go there because it just it sounds like it's a mining area and, and that's sort of a big concern going with shark cage diving or sea lions or um, sea lion colonies, whale watching up on the Nullarbor particularly. Um, these are really iconic attractions to our region and if they are damaged in any way because of the mining, that's, yeah, it's, it's a big problem. Uh, our issues with these types of things is what's the risks and what's the consequences. Uh, it takes a lot for us to get to a stage to oppose natural resource development because that's the business we're in itself. Now, in this case, the problem is when you weigh up the risks against the consequences, then any kind of drilling in the Great Australian Bight or even surveys have major problems. If Equinor were to find oil, then there would be a significant, probably, number of greater number of rigs in the Great Australian Bight and obviously the risks increase. So the fish in the Great Australian Bight, if their migration pattern, if there's significant mortality from a spill, significant other impacts, then that's a long-term effect. It's not a matter of an aquaculture operation where you may clear the oil spill and then restock the following year. In our case, we can't restock simply because we have no quota because of the original spill or uh, successive spills. So we're talking about the end of the tuna industry as we know it. People have a choice here. Uh, you either take the risk with the current large-scale industries which are proven long-term value-adding industries and a renewable resource every year as uh, against oil and gas, of course, which is not a renewable resource. The compensation issues, which don't compensate families who are in this industry and uh, the thousands of people that are dependent on this industry, it compensates for potentially the owners of the resource for one year. It doesn't compensate for the 10, 20 years that there's really no quota or compensate for the end of the industry. Those are the realities of it and those are the consequences and that's why it can't happen.
I knew that this would happen. I want to see the fish. I saw it, saw it coming. I watched them splash and splish. The day the big oil came here. Oh, what are those big trucks? Is Daddy gonna work for them? They never had my trust. The oil slick's horrendous, killing every life. Another species, gone again from where they used to thrive. I didn't think we needed oil, even for our cars. At school today, I learned about the hydrogen in jars. The Great Australian Bite was once a place of dream. The things the companies did to us, they were all foreseen. The reason that we moved here was because we loved the coast. As Big Brother rubs his hands with profit and with boast. Tell the story, sister, of how you swam the sea and how the whales bred here and how it used to be. That was in the old days when the sea was clear. The future now is different since oil proved our fear. Why would someone do that? Destroy our sea so quick. And, and now, now on, on the horizon, horizon it's, it's just, just an oil slick. slick.